So it's probably unwise to draw any major conclusions from early voting numbers, because although you can pinpoint trends here and there, they won't necessarily be indicative of the final results since we're working with incomplete information here. With that being said, some of Trump's biggest boosters online have spotted what could be a sign of what's to come, and that is massive, massive turnout among women. Now, political prognosticators like Michael Moore predicted that women were going to be the driving force behind Harris's victory if she won. And now there are signs that he may be correct. So let me show you what I mean. Harris spokesperson Ian Sams shared this graphic from CNN that puts it into perspective just how large the gender gap is in swing states. And I've got to say, it is genuinely jaw-dropping. As you can see, female voters are far outpacing male voters in every single swing state. Look at that. In North Carolina and Michigan, they're outpacing men by 10 points. In Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Wisconsin, women are outpacing men by more than 10 points. Now, this is obviously a good sign for Harris, but the caveat is that we don't actually know how these women are voting. And historically, as the Daily Beast reports, men do tend to vote in proportionately higher numbers on election day. Although, according to the Center for American Women and Politics at Rutgers, the turnout gap between women and men voters has grown in favor of women in every presidential election since 1980. So I don't think it's shocking to see that the gender gap is already looking like it's gonna be wider in this election. But the question is, by how much? And when you consider just how poorly Trump's been doing with women and how good Kamala has been doing with all women, including white women, and then when you take into account just how galvanized women are by the issue of abortion, it's not unreasonable to think that most of these women are breaking for Harris, although we don't know that yet. Now, if that is the case, that they are breaking for Harris, that could tip the scales in Harris's favor in a big way. And I've got to say, even though we don't know yet, just seeing the momentary panic among Trump's biggest bootlickers, it has made me feel a little bit more optimistic. So after seeing these numbers that we just saw Charlie Kirk tweeted out, early vote has been disproportionately female. If men stay at home, Kamala is president. It's that simple. If you want a vision of the future, if you don't vote, imagine Kamala's voice cackling forever. Man, I just can't understand why women don't want to vote for Republicans. Men need to go vote now. Mike Cernovich chimed in tweeting, male turnout in Pennsylvania for Trump has been a disaster. Unless this changes, Kamala Harris takes PA and it's over. Now, right-wing influencer Colin Rugg responded to that saying, meanwhile, we have clowns on X wanting to repeal the 19th Amendment instead of getting their own male friends out to vote. And to that point, Mike Cernovich actually chastised Trump for not doing enough to appeal to women, saying, it's great that Trump did podcasts, it drove news, which is good because otherwise stuff gets made up. That's ironic coming from a Trump supporter who makes up shit all the time. Problem is thinking that DraftKings coupon code link clicking alcoholics who space out when tuning into podcasts while high vote women vote and more needs to be done now fellow right-wing influencer rob smith responded to that asking genuine question what needs to be done to engage more women more female influencers to which cernovich responded to that saying let's repeal the 19th morons they should all be persona non grata a demand for accountability among people with large audiences and to his point neo-nazi nick fuentes who had dinner with donald trump tweeted out if trump loses blame women he later added this election proves that women should not have the right to vote yeah, in other words, I think that they may be getting the sense that the chickens may be coming home to roost for them because Republicans, at least online Republicans, have been more focused on disenfranchising women by talking about repealing the 19th Amendment as opposed to just trying to convince them to vote for Donald Trump. For example, John McKinty, who was actually part of Trump's administration and would likely be part of his administration again if he won, made this joke on TikTok about not letting women vote. So I guess they misunderstood. When we said we wanted male only voting, we meant male M-A-L-E. Hilarious. But don't worry, he's just joking, ooh, ooh, calm down, triggered snowflakes. I mean, the problem is that this is one of the architects of Project 2025. So I don't take that as a joke because he's part of the plan to turn America into a Christian nationalist nation. And while the plan doesn't explicitly call for disenfranchising women, a Christian theocracy would inevitably do just that because the Bible mandates women be subservient to men. And if you base policy on biblical principles, then 
put two and two together and it doesn't look great. So I'm not going to dismiss this as a, as a joke, especially after this entire movement just stripped women of their own bodily autonomy, which is why they're now panicking because it turns out taking away rights might lead to some backlash. Who would have thought? Now, there's been this idea that's been floating around that some women are defying their husbands and secretly voting for Harris. And I think that this notion really scares Republicans because, you know, they feel like they're losing control even of the women in their own lives. And we don't really have a way to quantify this or know that it's happening in large numbers. But look at how Fox News host Jesse Waters reacted at the mere prospect of his own wife secretly casting a vote for Harris. And if I found out Emma was going into the voting booth and pulling the lever for Harris, that's the same thing as having an affair. That to me. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> he let him finish. You're be oh, go, that, Jesse. That, 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 that violates our day, the sanctity of our marriage. Preach on. Yes. Uh, what else is she keeping from me? Exactly. What Why else would has she, she been have lying to lie to you? about? Why would Roll she lie to you? Jesse have you has... threatened her? Why would she lie to you? Oh, they want me to tease. Why would she do that and then <laughs> vote Harris? Why would she say she was voting He's Trump not the and then she voting you. Harris? And I caught her. So and then she said, admit, I lied to you for the so last four years. So you admit you intimidate It's people. over, Emma. That would be oh, D-Day. It's funny how the women on the panel knew how bad it looked and were subtly trying to get him to shut the fuck up, but he just kept talking and went on to compare it to a betrayal on the level of cheating. Wow. Listen, if you are a conservative man and you're worried about your wife not telling you about who she's voting for, maybe you should ask yourself, why she doesn't trust you enough to tell you who she's voting, voting for. Maybe be a little bit introspective about what you're doing to make your own wife feel unsafe around you rather than blaming them for defying you. But I mean, Judge Janine Pirro's reaction there isn't surprising because right-wing women have been pretty vocal and blunt about the many ways Trump and Republicans have been turning off women. And they too realized that it could very well cost him the election. Case in point, look at the way that Megyn Kelly reacted to Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden. Trump was not well served by those around him last night. It wasn't a Nazi rally. All that's nonsense. But I'm telling you, even for me, and I voted for Donald Trump last week, it was too brotastic. Okay? It was. You're trying to win an election in which you're hemorrhaging female voters. Maybe when you present in front of hundreds, thousands at least, at Madison Square Garden, you clean up the bro talk just a little so you don't alienate women in the middle of America who are already on the fence about Republicans. Do they have no women advising their campaign? Is there no actual woman sitting behind the scenes, coming up with a guest lineup and saying, let's just have a word with the guys who are going to be speaking about this isn't the bar. This isn't their living room. This is a campaign. This is politics. We're trying to get him elected. We don't need to rally the base or guys anymore. And it's not helpful, even if we do want to rally the base or guys, to go full off-color insults to different racial groups and so on. I get it. I, trust me, nothing that was said offended me. I'm almost unoffendable. But I understand how this plays, especially with women. And it was an effed up choice. They took what was a, an amazing celebration of Trump exciting and well attended and hugely enthusiastic and gave themselves a big black eye. This isn't about the insane media, which did, of course, what the insane media is going to do. This is about them giving the insane media all these headlines that undermined the main man, Donald Trump, who did exactly what he should have last night. You effed up. Hey, Megan, have you ever considered whether or not these aren't just strategic missteps? Or that Trump isn't just getting bad advice, which is why he's making these terrible decisions. Have you ever thought that maybe they'd rather lose than win with women? I mean, one of the core tenets of fascism is rampant sexism. And they're signaling to you that they don't want you to be part of their movement, but you won't take the hints. I mean, I'm a gay dude, and all my life, Republicans have collectively told me to fuck off and to commit seppuku. I've taken the hint. I'm not welcome in this party. Why won't you take the hints, Megan? I mean, they just took away your ability to control your own body. 
This isn't some minor disagreement about marginal tax rates. It is an act of violence against women. 64,565 women have become pregnant after being raped in the aftermath of Roe v. Wade being overturned. And in the 14 states where those rapes occurred, most of them have no exceptions for victims of rape. That is your party, Megan. So no, of course the Trump campaign doesn't have any women advising them. That's not some campaign misstep. They're not overlooking this. It's a choice that they made. But Megyn Kelly is not alone because Nikki Haley also made a similar criticism of the Trump campaign. I mean, the, this bromance and this masculinity stuff, I mean, it, it, it borders on edgy to the point that it's going to make women uncomfortable. You know, you've got affiliated PACs that are doing commercials about calling Kamala the C-word. Or you had speakers at Madison Square Gardens, you know, referring to her and her pimps. That is not the way to win women. It sure isn't. And this is not some liberal saying this. It is a Republican, Nikki Haley, who wants Donald Trump to win, saying that he's blowing it. And after fucking round, Trump and his supporters are getting the sense that they're about to find out. And that's why they're panicking. But again, early voting trends aren't necessarily indicative of the final results. And I don't want to give you the false impression that this is going to be how the election plays out. But I will say the widespread panic right now about the large numbers of women turning out is a tacit admission that they know they might have messed up. But we don't know and we won't know for sure until Election Day or probably the day after. And as doomer pilled as I've been, there is cause for cautious optimism, even though the polls are pretty close. For example, this Gallup poll demonstrates that there's also an enthusiasm gap between Democrats and Republicans. This is huge. And as Adam Carlson points out, among registered voters, Democratic enthusiasm is at Obama 2008 levels. So enthusiasm, a surge in women voters, these are reasons to be a little bit more positive and less doomer pilled, even though we don't know how the election is going to turn out. And on top of that, CNN analyst Harry Enten points out that there's something else really working in Harris's favor, likability. Harris, simply put, is more popular than Donald Trump. Her net favorable rating is higher than Trump. She's at minus two. Trump's at minus seven. I went all the way back since 1956 and looked at the polls. Does the more popular candidate usually win? The answer is absolutely yes. 16 times the more popular candidate is one. Only one time the less popular candidate is one. I will note that was Donald Trump back in 2016. But of course, remember, Hillary Clinton was quite unpopular herself. But the bottom line is this. Kamala Harris has been consistently more popular in the polls than Donald Trump is. She's consistently had a higher net favorable rating than Donald Trump. And normally, usually, the candidate who's more popular goes on to win on Election Day. Democrats are fond of that saying, forget the polls, when we vote, we win. Yes. And you see something in that. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the special elections, right? Democrats in special elections, their performances the last two years. What has happened? We're looking at state legislative and federal uh, special elections. On average, these Democrats have surpassed Joe Biden's 2020 margin by two points, by two points. And remember, Joe Biden won. So the fact that these Democrats have been doing better than Joe Biden's been doing is a good sign. Historically speaking, there is correlation between how folks do in the special elections, especially in this polarized era, and how folks do eventually in the presidential election. It was actually one of the warning signs last time around in 2020, where Democrats really weren't doing that great in special elections, despite the polls saying that Joe Biden was gonna win rather easily. It suggested Trump would do better on election day. This time around, the special elections are suggesting the opposite, that in fact, Joe Biden, because Democrats have been exceeding Joe Biden's margin, that maybe Democrats will actually do better than the polls have been indicating. But what about the fact, two factors. Yeah. One, the right track, wrong track. Country, so few people think the country is going on the right track right now. Yeah. And also something you pointed out yesterday as a factor, which is Biden's bad approval rating. Yeah, so yesterday I pointed out that very few people think the country is going on the right track. Very few people approve of Joe Biden's approval rating. You can see it right here in 2024. It's just 28 percent who say the country's on the right track. Forty percent approve of Joe Biden's job. But remember, in 2022, these metrics look awfully, awfully similar. In fact, slightly less believe the country was on the right track, slightly more approved of Joe Biden's job, but very similar numbers here. And remember, even though the top metrics were bad for Democrats in 2022, the White House party did historically well in that midterm. So the bottom line is, Kate, a lot of Democrats believe when voters vote, they win. And with abortion being a much bigger issue this time around than historically speaking, when it was in 2022, Democrats did historically well. Perhaps Democrats will surprise a lot of folks and do historically well come next Tuesday. So there you have it. A little kernel of hope to get you to Tuesday. And listen, at this point, 
There's no sense in being overly worried. All you can do is vote and wait for the results. I know that there's a lot at stake in this election, but we shouldn't worry ourselves sick over what might or might not happen. So use this final weekend before the election to treat yourself in some way. Watch a movie, buy ice cream, go out to dinner with your family, take some time to bask in the unknown and don't catastrophize too much because it's not gonna change the results. All you can do is respond in a way where you don't make yourself overly worried. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? Tree, tree, tree. tree. <laughs> Tree? You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs>